Uh, Mark has been in the satellite business for a, uh, I don't know how many years. I met him years ago when he was with National Public Radio. When we installed our first uh, uplink for Auburn and Alabama distribution. And yes, we actually uplinked both both schools at one time, and, and they didn't fight each other. We actually ended up, I think, uh, uplinking several others. We were doing uh, Arkansas and South Carolina and uh, and even some stuff from, from Las Vegas. I don't know how we ended up doing the, some basketball team or something from Las Vegas. But uh, now Mark has his own company uh, called uh, Link Up Satellite. It used to be uh, KU Satellites. He does a lot of work uh, with churches in putting KU systems to, to feed the services out to uh, satellite churches or smaller church uh, facilities that people have. I think your largest is the one in uh, L.A. with Saddleback, Saddleback Church. Uh, uh, so I'm going to ask Mark if he'll come on down and get his stuff set up. And he's got some innovative uh, things to talk about, especially now since the... Um, since the uh, main station rule has been taken out of the FCC rule book and no longer do you have to maintain the studio, I know that was a lot of relief to some of you guys that had some main station studios that you had to maintain a simulated studio in the other city. Well, now you don't have to do that anymore. And Mark has some things that he wants to share with you about some innovative uh, devices that his company has. Uh, not here to advocate the end of local radio but I do want to provide you with some information that your uh, managers and owners are probably going to inquire to you about in regards to uh, the FCC's recent ruling on main studios and uh, I thought since we were talking about centralized command and control, you know, a Star Trek Borg reference was probably relevant. My wife said not to make a joke, though, so I won't because she does exert a lot of central command and control. Um, so let's take a little, a, a, a quick look at the uh, review of the FCC rulings. I pulled out a few passages. And, uh, you know, a couple of the important points. Moreover, repealing the rule will encourage the launch of new broadcast stations in small town and rural areas and help prevent existing stations in those areas from going dark. Uh, broadcasters are now able to cover local events, including severe weather or other emergencies, through the use of portable cellular devices. And programs that have provided the station's most significant treatment of community issues during the preceding three month period so they're going to want you to catalog that information just as you do now even if you don't have a main studio um, broadcasters can use modern technology in broadcast information about local events um, the main studio rule imposes significant and burdensome costs on broadcasters, particularly in smaller broadcast markets and stations. <coughs> stations will have flexibility to operate studios in the most efficient manner, and some stations that are co-owned or jointly operated may find it more efficient for them to co-locate their studios. Uh, broadcasters also will remain subject to license renewal and quarterly issues program list requirements. And then last, technology makes it easier than ever before to originate locally relevant programming from locations outside of the station's community of license and the existence of technology that enables stations to provide local broadcast coverage. Without a local main studio, also moots concern that licenses need a local main studio to broadcast emergency information. Now, what we're gonna do is take a look at what we can learn from the non-commercial stations because they've had this ability for over 15 years and and we're going to take a look at the emf model um, but also it's not just limited to emf wyoming public radio colorado public radio uh, way fm media 
dozens of non-commercial broadcasters have used this technology from small networks of five, six stations up to EMF, which is, you know, over 600 stations. So for more than 15 years, EMF has provided programming and local content insertions at their FM transmission sites. Uh, the Rockland Studio and Hub provides uh, live studios, automation, program insertion uh, for 600 stations, and they run the network uh, completely out of that location. They supplement it with the Indianapolis site where they perform their morning shows, and it serves as a backup transmission hub. There are two major sources of this technology. Uh, one, and, and you're probably familiar with both of them, one being the XDS platform, the other one being uh, the IDC platform. Um, and the, the, the results at the end are, are very similar. You're able to um, time shift programs. You're able to feed live audio. You're able to feed cues. You're able to feed RDS data. Um, you know, a little different way in the, that they make the soup, but the outcome is pretty similar. So the typical system includes a hub, a transmission platform, you can use satellite, you can use IP, or you can use a combination of both. If you use a combination of both, a hybrid, it is the most reliable system. It also gives you the most features. Because not only are you using the satellite for delivery, but you're also using IP to poll and regularly inquire of the receivers, did you receive the file, did you play the file? Can you send me your, your logs? Um, you know, what's your status? Uh, and, and the receiver operates both satellite, IP, or can fold back to one or the other as a backup. So the centralized studio model, so that's production, delivery, content, management, everything at the head end and at the, at the remote end is your transmission for local FM or AM. Um, as we take a look at the EMF model, we'll focus on the X digital platform because that's the one they use. The head end is made up of three, three sections, your encoders, and in the case of X Digital, you can you can decide on analog, AES, AES67, or a DVB MUX. It's also a very scalable system. The, sec the second part of it is the MUX. You can scale it from a large network like a Premier or a Westwood using 80 channels, a medium sized network with having up to 16 channels, or just a standard regional network with four stereos. The great thing is, regardless of which size you choose, you can always start off with, with one stereo channel and license the others as you grow. But the power of any system like this is the network and content management system. Uh, in, in the form of XDS, of course, it's web-based control. So you can log in, it distributes live and stored content. It also distributes a schedule to each receiver. You're probably familiar with the schedule. If you've got Premier or Westwood and you log in and set up your schedule, you also have the ability in an owned and operated network if you own multiple receivers to have the network management control the schedule of each one of those receivers. And the receiver can provide 
an as-played log. That's why ESPN Westwood and everybody loves this because it can send them a, an as-played log as an affidavit. So the storm forward solution it is more than just what you've probably experienced with Westwood, Dial Global, Premier, ABC, whatever network you're using an XDS or an IDC receiver from. It's a much more powerful system than just playing uh, a local spot in the middle of a football game. It is a DVB receiver, a decoder, but it's also an automation system. There's also, in a sense, a switcher built into it. Uh, it, it it's a complete solution. So let's take a look at the uh, topology uh, of a typical system. Multiple channels of audio, based on how many encoders. Or you can use RS-232 relay closures, IPQs, RDS, the network management and the content servers all get muxed into a single transport stream. The transport stream can either come out as ASI to feed to a satellite modem or come out as IP and you can feed it to web servers, streamers, a firewall, and you can deliver by the cloud or you can deliver by satellite. This is a typical audio satellite system solution that we put together. Same here, audio, analog, AES, RDS data, relays, queues, store and forward content network management, all into the MUX, comes out ASI, and the, and the only additional components to complete an uplink, a satellite modem, a buck, and a dish. C band or KU band. Uh, it, when it comes out of the modem, it's L band. And this is the network content management screen. And what it gives you is uh, the ability to have complete control over the head end and the receivers. So you can take multiple studios, multiple locations multiple content contributors, switch them into different encoders, give them program identifiers. Each, each live audio channel will have a program identifier. It's part of the DVB platform so that a receiver it knows which live feed it's supposed to pick up. So you can have the receiver switch between PIDs during a, during a break. You can have it switch to the stored content on the drive. Uh, you can schedule it to play long form content off of the drive. Um, and you can set up a schedule for the network, for a region, or for an individual station. So you control the head end and the receivers with the system. A typ typical satellite system can be C-band or KU-band and the additional solution is web-based streaming. You can set one of these up. If you've got high-speed internet, you can set up one of these networks and you, you control all of the, the, the terminal points, then you can set this up as an internet only uh, solution. So. Um, the larger groups use satellite and internet together to get the, the, the most reliability. Uh, we take a look at the downlink and the transmitter location. Um, once again, you're talking, if you're talking C-band distribution, you're talking 99.99% reliable. That's why the major networks use it. That's why NPR uses it. That's why EMF uses it, um, but it has a drawback. Drawback is the size of a dish. You need a 3.7 meter dish. KU 
99.8% reliable, but it's got an advantage, smaller dishes. Internet, it's difficult to measure your reliability, but it may already be in place at your site. So each one has pros and cons. Those are things you have to weigh out as you're looking at that. And what you want to do is weigh that out and weigh out the cost of the different ones. Um, but the technology, the equipment, works in any one of those environments. Um, this is a typical rack at a, at a location, and it has everything in it. It has your you know, processing, your AES, or your EAS, your receiver, your transmitter. That's, that's your station. That's your content contribution at, let's say, the transmitter site. Um, those are the typical uh, XDS receivers. And like I said, C-band, KU-band, or high-speed internet. Um, at those sites, what the receiver is going to look at, your feed, L-band, IP, or both. And if it's both, it'll switch back and forth if you lose one or the other. Um, so you're going to be receiving a transport stream. That transport stream that you receive at the, at the downlink contains all the audio PIDs. It contains the um, relay queue information, you know, R RDS data, if, if you've got it in it. The network management controls the content management, which would be any files that are being downloaded. Uh, all of that is in the transport stream. And if you're going to, if you're going to have stored programs or audio files, it actually, it actually stores the entire transport stream, not just the audio files. That way, if you store it, it includes the relays, queues, RDS data, all of that is on the drive. So when, it, when your schedule says, I want to go from live to stored and get switched to the decoder, the entire transport stream that came with that program is being decoded and then being directed to the different output ports, audio relays, RDS. That's why if you've got, let's say, um, let's say you're taking a, a, a program from Premiere and it's an hour long program and you may see it as live, but it may actually be stored on the hard drive. They include any localization in that stored file. So you've got the program stored the guy in California's got the same program stored, but he's got different ads. He's got different cues. Right. Now, an interesting part of, of the way EMF is doing this is they have satellite over IP to provide secure, reliable IP communications with their units. The new tech dialogue allows them at each location, anything with a GUI, a transmitter, processor, monitor, anything with a GUI can be monitored from the head end 24-7, 365 with reliability and secure. Um, and they can put the the, they can put the, they can mux the IP hub in with the XDS system and provide it on one single carrier. So the downstream on that carrier is a single channel. The upstream is KU band. So they can use the same dish on all of their KU sites. Now, a fascinating piece of technology that's been, that was really kind of developed for ESPN and, and Premier and Westwood 
was watermarking and an off-air monitor developed by XDS. A group like EMF has taken this technology and used it for this solution. Now what, you, what this little XDS WMR does is it can tune to up to four um, stations, AM, FM, uh, you can, you know, 2 AM, 2 FM, however you want to do it. Uh, it has the ability to monitor the signal, has a silent sense on it, can send you a text or an email. So if you're, if you're managing a group of stations, let's say throughout the state of Alabama, you can have each one of those send you a, send you a text or an email if they go down. It can store 30 days worth of compressed audio so that you can call it up. It can stream the audio to you. It's compressed, but it's a confidence monitor. And it connects to the IP. So if you're doing IP both ways, that's your confidence monitor. That's your monitor. You can look back three days ago, five days ago, 10 days ago, find out how things were going. If somebody says they heard something, you've got access to it. So it becomes a powerful tool. So wherever you've got, got your phone and you've got the internet, you can monitor your station. And that really kind of brings all of the, uh, the pieces together on the internet to, to build a group of stations, monitor a group of stations. So as we review kind of how the non-coms have, have developed and taken this technology that managers and owners are going to ask you about in, in regards to eliminating the main studio rule. We've looked at the distribution of live and pre-recorded content. We've looked at sp spot insertion and programmer placement. Looked at time zone delay, delayed playback, advanced scheduling, pre-recorded channels and virtual channels, uh, complete integration with sales, traffic, and automation systems, and accountability, being able to look at your site, listen to your site, monitor your site from wherever you're at. So um, what I want to do is I want to hand out some cards in case any of you have questions later on. Um, get those out. Get pass and uh, are there any questions on anything we've kind of talked about? Is there anything that, that I can relate more on to you about the experiences of uh, the non-coms? I'm curious about the watermarking. What technologies have the AM and FM will pass and the listener probably won't hear? Is it subsonics? Or? I, I would have to, I'd have to double check that with, with XDS is exactly how they did that, but that it's, it, it would appear the way it is because the way it's passed on the digital, it would be some type of subsonic. Yep. I've got a question about the returns. Uh, yep. I think it was two slides ago, you had the mm -hmm. satellite modem with the two way. Mm -hmm. uh, does that involve on the return channel that each site needs its own slice of the spectrum on the satellite to return it back or do they all have multi time division multiplex on the two-way two IP on the two-way IP yeah it's a TDMA okay. so and and by by having your own network secured and, and as opposed to buying something like a HughesNet with a HughesNet that TDMA return channel is you're, you're sharing it like 200 to 1 as far as subscribers you build your own network, you're probably 20 to 1. It increases the availability. And, you know, that delay that people get in the consumer HughesNet type thing, you, you can eliminate that. Yes, sir. So. Sort of 
the maximum throughput speed on on IP it'd be up to you know whatever your satellite IP modem is going to. Are you talking about on the on the two-way IP yeah. solution? It's according to how much bandwidth you buy. So, you know, in in the case of EMF, I think you know they've got. Yeah, they're somewhere in that. That's. And that's divided up. I mean, typically, if I run a speed test in one of the EMF sites, you're going to see roughly 10 kilobits up, 10 kilobits down. Right. When it's shared with all the other sites, so yes, kilobits. Which, with what we're using it for, is perfectly usable because we're not, as long as we're not doing anything graphics intensive mm -hmm. or anything that's doing a lot of real time updating, we normally don't. Remote systems, and as far as confidence monitor coming back, you know, if you reduce the bit right there, it's easy enough to go in and listen to the line. Yeah, no. What's the, the what's the bit rate on the on the the monitor? It's um, like sixteen or something like that. I, something like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're able to do it that way, and we can also listen to the streams coming off the Sage Index. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, they're running at about sixteen. Right. But the, the the new tech, you know, it's all based on bandwidth that's bought on the satellite. Yep. So tent. So I hope if uh, you know if somebody comes and asks you questions about the multi-site, go ahead. Two o'clock this morning, smoothest. Yeah, I, I, actually, I was just looking at one of the uh, broadcast forums, and folks were saying they had two or three dB extra this morning. I, I have a customer on there, Dakota News Network, an American Ag, out of Fargo, and every one of his XDS receivers, you know, went without a bump. So, sounds like sounds like smooth as smooth as glass, and you know. Got up on time, thanks to Elon Musk. Oh, I know. I sent my guys were on the road for months. Oh, oh, okay. So funny story. So uh, we're we're in New Jersey putting in some new dishes for Beasley. I get a call from a broadcaster, guy I've known for a long time, an engineer for a group I won't name. Uh, <laughs> he calls me up. He says. I need some help moving, moving the dish. What's the last week of July? I said, we're about to head home. He says, uh, well, can you come by and take a look at it? I said, well, can you send me a picture? We're, we're in New Jersey. We're going to be heading home. Send me a picture. He sends me a picture of the first dish I ever put in. <laughs> December 1983, a 2.8 meter scientific Atlanta. I said, you're kidding, right? He said, nope, I am not kidding you. We showed up, <laughs> rusted. It's been there since 1984, 85, easy. Totally rusted. That big jack screw, couldn't move it. I got, I got two boys that are, you know, 30 and 22, both played football and wrestled and them big guys. Nah, they're jumping up and down. Nah, it's not good. So he's like, I gotta have this move. I said, well, you know, I think you need a new one. Well, they're not going to let me buy a new one. Now, this is the Washington, D.C. metro market. <laughs> I said, you're kidding me. He said, no. And we ain't got any time because this is, you know, we're a couple of days. And we're switching. He says, uh, well, what can we do? So we started looking at it, and we figured we could, we could move it azimuth wise we just couldn't move the elevation so started looking at it and tell you what we can do we got these straps that we've been holding down stuff with on it. <laughs> one of my boys got up on the top strapped it ratchet strapped it down back here ratcheted it moved it around got it hey we got a signal we got a nine this is pretty amazing so we got it there. Well, what do we do now? 
Uh, I think we gotta I think we gotta cut this jack screw off. It's gotta go. Because <laughs> we gotta fine tune it a little bit more, right? So we cut the jack screw off, ratchet it a little bit more. Oh, we got a ten. Went down to Home Depot, got a couple of pieces of aluminum angle. <laughs> <laughs> screwed it in it's called fixed adjustment <laughs> so thanks for your time and it, like I said this thing is completely scalable you know from three stations to 3,000 and you know it, it, and the costs are scalable as well the software costs and everything are based on the size of the network and that's the way IDC does it, the way X Digital does it. And if I can help you research any of this, uh, don't hesitate to call me. And anybody did get a card, I've got some more here. What is it, Jared? Well, up on the uh, internet only options there. If you don't do a VSAT or a uh, one way satellite distribution contact, mm -hmm. how does the internet delivery uh, quality, latency, et cetera, if you're trying to do a live stream of IP? You've got a streaming server, um, and each one of the receivers is going to go back to the IP address, to that streaming server. Okay, so once again, it's like anything else. It's all about the bandwidth availability. That. Yeah. And this is one of the encoder, encoding servers that's part of the XDS, in this case, system, or is it just any web stream? What is it? No, there, well. They've got a, 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 a web streaming software mm -hmm. that, that you would load onto a server. And uh, typically, they like to load it onto the server themselves. And um, uh, that's the, if, if any of you may have noticed when you were moving your XDS dish from AMC, or your network dish from AMC 8 to 18, you may have kept the signal, that was, some of it worked, some of it didn't, it was, and it was funny. I was in Troy, Alabama, you know, plenty of, plenty of bandwidth, locked right up. Was in WSB in Atlanta, it wasn't there, you know. That, that's a full four meg ASI stream, isn't it, Mark? Hmm? The, the IP stream, that's a full four meg ASI stream. Probably. Yeah, so that's the that's the key. You know, whether it's the the satellite version or the terrestrial version, it's all about bandwidth availability. But it does work. Yep, it's it'll switch. It'll switch, but it also. Right, it's to transport. Oh, it, so. it has to be able to associate all the metadata and mm -hmm. store it on the drive, otherwise you get disruptions in the program. Right. The transport stream includes everything. It includes the relays, the cues, the, yeah, the whole bit. Premier receivers. Well, all, every one of them is. Every one of them. What, well, it's on unicast stream. The full bandwidth. Yep. So, yeah, you would need six times the bandwidth. Because that's one, one of the work. one of the things. When and Cumulus does the same thing? We did a project of four of those receivers. I've okay. got ten receivers that are all. Mm -hmm. Well, I just thought that with minimum you're going to have. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to work. Four P's, that's 40 minutes. Bob's, uh, got, Bob's got gigabit internet that's all sucked up by a satellite receiver. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize that. I thought it was just the one program I, I was carrying as a transport No, no, it, it's looking for that whole transport stream. Because we've got, we did a project in Dallas last March where we moved from an existing facility to a new facility, and the landlord, the, the idiot company that's since gone bankrupt, um, didn't bother to see if they could put a satellite dish at the new location. So we ended up having to cut everything over, and Paul can attest to this because he was there. We put the receiver in and plugged it in, and ESPN you know, allowed us to take IP only. He can win the game some months. Yeah. And it was like, you can do this for 30 days, but unless you get a satellite in there, we can't feed you that stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of service at the uplink, you know, get an yeah. Right. So, but 
it, it worked. It worked flawlessly for that month, and then after that, I think they shoved the barracks in or something like that. And then, like two months later, they run it. So and stiffed me for like twenty. Oh, oh. We'll get into that later. Oh, oh man, yeah. sorry to hear that. Yeah, well, I repossessed a bunch of the crap, so yeah. that was all right. So, so thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. Heard some great stories from from Mark and some of his crew that went around to move dishes. <laughs> some of the situations they ran into were just hilarious. You know that uh, you just could know, like the one you were talking about. They were so rusted they wouldn't move, and they, it hadn't been moved, you know, for years. I don't know when they when did they first do. That's been up for years, hasn't it? My my first satellite was 1983 December when. CBS and and, and uh, NBC and ABC went from yeah. terrestrial landline to satellite. Now, the only one I had ever seen was the one Charlie Wooten put in at WKGC. Charlie? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, the good old Charlie. So, uh, the only one I'd ever seen was the one Charlie put in for NPR like a year before. And the, and the, the general manager said the chief engineer was busy and... Uh, you look like you could do something. Here's a box. Go put that together. <laughs> just so, just it, point it up there. Yeah, that's right. Just. How many cases of PB blast did you go through today? Oh, oh, we, oh, yeah. We, we, we we're running it by the case. That was your lifesaver right there. Oh yeah, <laughs> PB blaster was the thing this summer. I mean, it, we, it, we, we went from. Uh, Gee whiz. Uh, on one trip, we drove from Panama City to Atlanta, to WSB, to Tennessee, to Nebraska, to Fargo, North Dakota, to West Virginia, to New Jersey, to D.C., and back home. Wow. So, yeah, we saw, it, 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 you know. And that last one was just, you know, that was perfect. Yeah. You know? Now, now he can't move it. So, <laughs> unless he goes buys more of that angle aluminum at Home Depot. All right. Well, we appreciate everybody being here today, and uh, come back tomorrow. We've got a couple more good presentations uh, tomorrow, and uh, I think this has been a really good week for us. Thank you very much. <laughs>